Hello, Matt here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to supercharge a dead drill battery. So what we'll be doing is replacing the dead NICAD cells in this drill battery with lithium ion cells. And we'll be adding a semi-automatic protection circuit so that the cells don't drop below a certain voltage level. So what this has done is basically given new life to this old but otherwise decent drill. Uh, so I don't have to buy a new one. It's actually my dad's, so my dad doesn't have to buy a new one. So yeah, continue watching and uh, we'll learn a bit about batteries and how to uh, replenish a dead drill battery. For this project, you'll need a little LiPo protector, which can be found on eBay for as little as £1.69. I'm demonstrating it here by plugging it into the balance connector of a LiPo RC car battery. It works with lithium ion cells too, which is why we can use it with the replacement batteries. It works by detecting the voltage of each individual battery and will beep if the voltage drops below a set value, which is important to avoid discharging the lithium ion cells too much, which damages them. I've bunged the little beepers on mine up with blue tack because the beepers are so loud it hurts your ears. Next, you'll want a source of lithium ion batteries. I got mine from a laptop battery which was no longer being detected by the laptop. You can purchase these batteries individually and they are known as 18650 batteries. Be warned, working with high power batteries can be dangerous, so take extra care to avoid shorting the positive and negative contacts together, as the batteries will get very hot and can potentially vent or even explode. If you undertake this project, I assume no responsibility if something goes wrong. Here you can see that the glue that was holding the battery inside its case has pulled away the blue cover, exposing the metal of the battery. It's important that we cover this up, as it's actually the negative contact of the battery and could cause a short. So we'll wrap it in some duct tape. Once you've wrapped them in duct tape, it'll be helpful to label them and mark the positive and negative contacts. We'll put the batteries aside for now and get our LiPo protector. So what we're going to do is create this circuit. The batteries are connected in series to equal 16 volts. The ground of the battery alarm is connected to the ground of battery 1. Each of the subsequent connectors are connected to the positive side of each battery in order. So what we want to do is add solder to the first five of the contacts, assuming you're going to be using four batteries. The one on the far left is the ground, and the subsequent ones are positive. Now we'll add some wires and label them. And we'll add a switch on the ground so that we can turn the whole thing on and off. Adding some tape to prevent shorts would probably be a good idea. Next we want to prepare our battery by adding some solder to it. Make sure the contact is very brief because it's heat and heat and batteries don't mix. We'll solder on the ground cable and bend over the contacts to make it more secure. We'll now solder wire 1 to the positive side of the battery and give it a test. The display should read 1CE, which stands for 1 cell. Now we'll add a short wire connecting the positive contact of battery 1 to the negative contact of battery 2. Next, solder wire 2 to the positive connection of battery 2. If tested, it should now read 2CE. Go through the remaining batteries following the same logic connecting the positive contact of the previous battery to the negative contact of the next battery and soldering the voltage testers wires to the positive side of each battery according to its number. If you've done it all correctly, your LiPo protector should read 4CE and cycle through the individual cells displaying their voltages. Though it's not pictured here, there's a tiny button on top which cycles through the trigger voltage for the alarm. Press it to cycle through to 3.10 volts. Whenever the battery dips below this level, it will trigger the beeping, alerting you that it's time to recharge. Bind the batteries together using duct tape to make it nice and secure, and that's the electronics done! Now get your old drill battery and open it up, removing the old cells. Retrieve the contacts as we'll need them later. Cut a hole in the front of the casing for the switch, 
and cut a square at the rear for the display of the voltage alarm to be seen through. Use plenty of strong glue to stick the batteries inside the casing and pull the switch through its hole, tightening its nut with some pliers. Add some glue to the voltage alarm and stick that in place as well. Solder the positive connection of battery number 4 to the casing's positive contact that we saved earlier. Do the same with the casing's negative contact, but make sure that the negative wire is hooked up to the switch so that the contact to the battery is only made when the switch is turned on. Glue the casing's contacts to their proper place and check that everything is working well and that the polarity is correct. If you need to, add some weight to keep the drill in good balance. I stuffed mine with some synthetic cotton so that nothing would rattle about inside. Screw the whole thing back together and it's done! The final thing to do is to bypass the electronics in the original charger so that the new lithium iron cells can be charged with a suitable charger. All you have to do is solder some external wire to the original charger's contacts, making sure that you have some kind of indicator of the polarity. To charge your new battery, you'll need a charger capable of charging lithium cells, which includes LiPo chargers. If your charger has the option, change the voltage type to LiIO. If it doesn't, just stick with LiPo, as it's close enough not to matter. Change its mode to 4S, which stands for 4 in series and change the rate to a conservative 1 amp. You can increase the amp rate to whatever the battery will take without it getting too warm. Make sure that you turn the battery on when you're charging it and take care when hooking it up to the charger so that you don't get the polarity mixed up. So now your drill should last longer and be more powerful than it was before. Um, so yeah, give it a go, it's worthwhile, especially seeing as it's so cheap. Here are some other videos that you might be interested in, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!